Good day's work. Another good day's work. When did you catch this one? Oh, a few weeks ago, I think. Nice though. Trips are okay. Yeah. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Saxon House episode, I think it's part five now. We're making steady progress. <clears throat> Probably, yeah, we've actually, we've done a fair amount, haven't we? We've done a lot, we've done a lot. <laughs> it doesn't seem like we've done a lot looking at the Saxon house now, but we've actually done quite a bit. Now, the wind is picking up, so apologies if there's any wind in the microphone. We've just cranked the fire up. Yeah. We've had some a lovely fish. What was it? Place. Place, place wasn't it? Place and home fries. Home fries and a bit of wine. It was lovely. And my knees were on fire. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty warm, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. it's warm here. There's no question Crikey, that. that's warm. Anyway, what we're doing is uh, the rafters. Uh, the batten, sorry. The battening. So we've basically been... We did the rafters previous episode uh, and we're focusing on the battens. Now, there's obviously a variety of different methods of how you can do this. You can use different materials. You can use lashings. You can use wood pegs but we've decided to use nails. Now, for those purists out there, you're gonna hate it. I know you are, and I apologize to you guys, but let me explain just why we need, you're just pleased we could use nails, aren't you? <laughs> why we're using nails is because they, they did have nails. They did have a form of metal nail back in the Saxon era. The problem was, from what I was researching, is that they're, they're quite time consuming to make. For such a small thing, it took quite a lot because they hand forged these things. It would have taken a lot of a lot of time, a lot of effort for a very minimal amount of reward, really. So they were quite precious. However, the way we figured it is the, the majority of the frame, the timber frame, is all done with wood pegs and it's buried into the ground. That frame is solid, isn't it? Oh yeah, we've been standing on it, we've been climbing. We've on been it. climbing all over it. That frame is absolutely solid. And the way we thought about this project was as long as our frame is done with wood pegs and joinery, mortise and tenon joints buried into the ground, and it's got the pit as well. If it's a solid frame, then we know we can build around that, and it's okay. Now, if we had gone for lashings, so I thought about this, I could have used the tree roots that we have, which I've still got. I could have used the tree roots to lash, uh, or we could have used maybe some, some form of natural, natural twine. Mm. The problem with that is, we want this structure to last. We've built this for, we've, no, we'll we've spent so much time building this, haven't we? Yeah, yeah it's been hard work. Back-breaking work of digging, debarking. It's a lot of work and we don't want to see it just rot away really fast. Now, if we use natural cordage, over time, that's going to wear away quite quickly, whereas a metal nail is going to hold for longer. So <clears throat> that was one of the reasons. If I did the wood peg, so I was going to rest, the, rest each batten up against the wood peg, which went into the rafters. However, our rafters are only thin. So if I had started drilling holes in all of the rafters all the way along it for a batten to go across, so weaken. it could just rest there, exactly, it's going to weaken, gonna weaken yeah. it. Weaken it. And if we use some sort of thatching material, like thatch or straw or something like that, when it rains, it absorbs into that material and it becomes really heavy. So there's actually, it, it looks like thatch roofs get a lot of, they're lightweight, but actually there's a lot of weight on there when the moisture's in them. Must be, yeah. Whereas tiling, obviously like cedar shingles or, or any form of shingles or things like that, tiles, the rain runs off. It doesn't collect on them, so there's yeah. not actually that much weight. Initially there's weight, but there's not much dead weight on them. You've got to shed the water. You've got as to fast shed the water, can. yeah. Shed it. So that way there's no water on the roof. There's no weight on the roof. However, we've gone for nails, guys. So that's my explanation and my reason for using nails. They did have nails in that era. They just wouldn't have probably used them like we did. They would have lashed it. 
but like I say, we want this. We want this to last. We, we're really pleased with it. Aren't Edward, we? I tell you what, the, the thing that's impressed me most, I'm not going to lie, has been that pine pitch that you melted down. Yeah, that is that amazing. That is like epoxy. I can't believe it's how nature's, hard that's gone. Someone how was hard? saying in the previous video, it's nature's form of that 30 second epoxy. Now the modern is, day stuff yeah, that goes on. Hard. That's nature's own it. form of oh, exactly that. So we're just happy doing what we do we're very pleased with that we're happy to use nails where we can we did for the whole project so far we've not used nails yeah, and actually going forward now we're probably not going to use many more nails because it's going to go back to more natural materials so the majority of the whole timber frame is all done with wood framing you know joinery techniques we're super pleased with that so we got those battens up and that was very time consuming again we used that awesome bark peeling station which was you so dad for some reason right comment below who likes who here likes peeling the bark with like a, a debarker or a draw knife? For some reason, Dad hates it. Why do you hate it? What is it? It's just so much peeling. It's so much peeling. <laughs> I'll I, tell you what it is. It's satisfying when you get one big long stroke off. Yeah. It's a bit like if you guys do DIY. I certainly do peeling wallpaper when you put your yeah. steaming gun on it. You yeah, steam it, it and you go, piece. Wow, I got a great big piece <laughs> off. Brilliant. And then you get a hard piece and you have to chip and scrape and dig away at it, it's horrible. And the same situation arises there. You come up against a yes, a knot. I know how many knots there are around the average pine tree. <laughs> it's five, it's five because I've axed them off and On it's each horrible. Ring, yeah. I even tried with the knife, didn't I? Yeah, yeah they're, they're hard, they're hard. But I find it a very therapeutic. When you get the technique right yeah. and you lean into it and you use your body and like you say, you get long strips. It is really therapeutic. So I love bark peeling. So who out there, comment below if you've done it before. He loves who likes it. the bark peeling? Because I absolutely cuckoo, love it. Cuckoo. So, so He's been in the woods too long. <laughs> so the reason, by the way, for those who are new, the reason why we're taking the bark and debarking all most of the logs, at least, on the whole structure, is because it makes the makes the wood last a lot longer. It stops bugs from the bugs love living underneath bark. That's what they do. It gives them a bit of sanctuary. Now it stops them eating away at the wood, rotting that wood. Eventually, you know, water would get into those cracks where the bugs have been and rot it away faster. So now you, just you talk about bugs. Yeah. You talk about bugs. You need to explain to people we don't have termites. Oh yeah, sorry guys. Yeah, let's say that. So when we built this pallet we're in cabin, we're in when we built this pallet cabin, grizzly bears. We had loads of you guys from the outback over in yeah. Australia. And you were saying how you guys have termites and you have a really big problem with it. And yeah. You said that something like that structure there would be eaten within about a month by termites. Oh. But we don't, we're in the UK, so we don't have any termites here. We don't have any problem with that. Um, which is probably why some of our structures here last for so long. Could be the weather. We don't weather. have, yeah, that, we have that climate where we don't have things that rot away for too long. But, um, so anyway, that's, that's a battening. We've done that. We're happy with it. It's staying there. It's not going to go anywhere anytime soon. It's going to stay up there. The second thing, what is it we've built here? Now, we've actually kind of drawn away from the Saxon house a little bit to help improve our pallet cabin site, which is like a little mini homestead. The world famous pallet cabin. The pallet cabin. What have we done, Dad? What have we been doing? Uh, well, because we did all the bark peeling over there, you know, we knew to keep that, but people have also come on the comments saying that's really good tinder, wouldn't they? They say, all that bark that we yeah, peeled off is bark. now really dry and it's like tinder material, yeah. So basically try and, you know, keep that for future fire lighting. But don't forget we're between two camps. You know, the Saxon house is over there. The famous, the world famous pallet cabin is behind us. Still going, no termites, no rotting. It's fine, two it years good. later, yeah. it's still going. Why not put it sort of midway-ish or, or, or closer to where we're gonna use it, chop up some logs, get ourselves set up so that we have got a load of tinder and a load of logs already, maybe for next winter or any general fire that we're cooking on. It's actually a really good idea. Essentially, it's like, a t it's, we're gonna call it a tinder box. It's like, it's not a log store. It's like a mixture of, a, it's a half log store and a half tinder area so we're going to call it a tinder box we still need to uh, kind of enclose the sides the back and the mm. sides with pallet wood which we'll do over time and we've stained it the same color as the pallet cabin we've got it a ship lap overlapped at the top yeah. i found some well funny enough the pallet the wood might had you have one of those giant enormous the new g stoves he had it delivered on a pallet and he says is that pallet any good to you yeah excuse me yeah how many a things rhetorical have I built question with pallet that. is going to get sawn up so a lot of that is made from as is another item in a minute we mentioned from the wood that came off the pallet from the G-stove because yeah. it's really, really thick, so that was good. The thin stuff I found on another pallet is ideal for overlapping, making the ship lap, yeah. you know, so that the yeah. rain runs, what, down the back? Yeah, it runs it? down the back of it. So yeah. we're pleased with that. Um, and again, that's going to help us for both the Saxon house when we, we'll probably yeah. have another log store over there anyway, but for the time being, this, get bigger. this is where we have our fires by the pallet cabin for the moment, yeah. that's our building area. 
So we're just happy to have all our log store and everything like that. And obviously we need to build up logs too. When I, when I was working away in the woods the other day, because this is filmed over a few days this episode, Dad turned up with the strangest contraption I think I've ever seen. It, it had to be made of pallet wood. It had it to was. be, it's Dad. So what, it, to me it's a wheelbarrow, but yeah, from pallet really wood. So what I did was find some pallet wood that's quite thick, because I knew if I made a wheelbarrow it's going to have to take some weight. I also had to get a support, so I cut it all out in my garage. Didn't, didn't do it here with a little axe and a bushcraft pack. I thought I'd do it at home. Uh, at my leisure, because Mike didn't know I was doing this. Yeah, this is a surprise to me in the woods. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was no enjoyment doing all that digging, was it? The no. first original pit we dug, if you've watched that first one. Episode of one, yeah. Episode one, wow, it's like being, it's a prison sentence. <laughs> it it was, was a, I felt like I was on a chain service game. service type thing. I was on a chain game, digging, <laughs> hammering. I thought, there must be an easier way of doing this, wheelbarrow. I thought, why not make a wheelbarrow out of pallet wood? So that's what I did. So I cut it with a jigsaw, I actually screwed it all together, and then I needed the two long arms, you know, to, to make my lifting area. Didn't want any joins in it, so I had to search around. And one of the industrial estates had a long piece of pallet wood. That's ideal. Gave me the two arms. So I thought, fine, I'm going to lift it up from there. That was all okay. What bothered me was the, was the thing that actually you guys aren't going to like this, because I have actually invented this round thing <laughs> called the wheel. <laughs> you think I'm joking. Has anybody ever patented the wheel. If not, you're going to be in debt to me because I've invented the wheel. <laughs> I didn't want it. I could have bought a rubber one. I, mean, I could have got one off another wheelbarrow. You probably I? could have taken I it. I didn't want to. I wanted to keep as close as I could to, to like a wood. Sort a of. wood. Yeah. You know, which is what these guys would have done. Now, I don't know. When did they invent the wheel? They obviously did the square one. Didn't work too well. The Flintstones. <laughs> the Flintstones. <laughs> yeah. The triangular one. A bit, a bit bumpy. <laughs> wasn't horrendous. It? A bit bumpy. And then somebody went, let's make it. Let's try right. a circular one. <laughs> Job done. So I couldn't find a big enough piece of wood, so I got a piece of scaffold board, drew a circle round using a paint tub to mark, and then a pencil in the middle, a pencil on the outside, and a marker in the middle, and did a circle like that round the outside. Cut it out with a jigsaw, put two of those together to spread the load. I didn't want it too narrow, it's gonna dig in the peat here. And then for the spindle, I used, wait for this, a piece of broom handle. Well, let me tell you guys, it works really well. Do you know, it was, I was quite surprised. I was quite surprised, I have to admit, I saw him tinkering around. I heard the old noise going of the wheel, yeah. blah, 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 coming through the woods. <laughs> but actually, I was quite impressed with it. And you know, we moved so much of that dried bark where yeah. I'd peeled it, all those bark peelings, we moved all of that to this log store. We moved and all, all the logs, logs that we in one hit. Yeah, it was really good. It's a good little piece you, of kit. You wouldn't have carried them in one go. No. We moved it all in one go. I was personally surprised how well you my broom it. handle spindle. And wait for this. What did I use to stop the spindle sliding out? A piece of coat hanger wire that I pinched from some hotel room. <laughs> I bent it out, put it through to stop the spindle good, coming yeah. out either end. And that did the and job. And it worked. It definitely worked. I know we've sort of, the Saxon housewives, we've not made huge progress since the previous episode. But, but in terms of what we're trying to do here, at this site, at this area, we have made a bit of progress. And over the next few episodes, you're gonna see quite the change in the Saxon house. Thanks to everyone who's been following the series, by the way, we're really, we are really grateful. Um, now, what a lot about, of you- What about the tinderbox? I mean, we wanted to know, where does it come from, the word tinderbox? Is so it, I'm thinking it's to do it with from? like tinderbox. the frontiersmen and things like that. The, 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 it's a traditional tinderbox is almost like a copper tin yeah. or a brass tin that they would keep their tinder materials in. Is that what it means? That what it That's means? what I would think. I don't yeah. know. Maybe you guys would know the actual origin of the tinder box or the tinder kit. I mean, really, it goes back to primitive era where they probably would have had some sort of pouch. Leather and pouch. And you've got the Sami tribe pouch. or Sami tribe, who are the reindeer herders. They have their kind of leather pouches or reindeer reindeer skin kind of pouches. Yeah. But, yeah, I wonder where it originated from, Tell actually. us, you know, is, who yeah. was the first one to invent the tinderbox? Listen, you know where the wheel's invented? It's me, I've got the patent. <laughs> I want at least $10 off each of you. If you've got any, anything at all, a wheelbarrow, especially a car or bicycle, I want royalties. <laughs> no, well, we're, we're very grateful for everyone kind of tuning into the series. Um, we're having an absolute blast, and it's, you know, it's great to learn about our ancestors, and yeah. really, we're probably closest to the Anglo-Saxons being British. We're probably closest to the kind of Saxons, Anglo-Saxons than, than we were with the Vikings and things like that. Mm. So yeah, what, what I want to know is, as well, what's your background, guys? What's your, uh, where are you from? Uh, are you, do you have a sort of, these DNA tests, you know these DNA tests you get? I got oh, one you did, done. You did one, didn't you? Yeah, yeah so yeah, I got yeah, one yeah. of these DNA tests done, 
um, since I was doing the Viking series, actually, because I just wanted to know what was in, well, it's my blood and your blood, I guess, as well. Half your blood, half mine. Oh, great. So, I really want to know. <laughs> yes, we're going to come out now. The family secrets are out. But no, and I did one. Um, I can't remember where it's from. One of those sites that do your DNA tests. And it's, it's really accurate. It's like a spit test. You spit in a tube and you send it off and then it, about eight weeks later mm. you get the results come back. And I found out, and I was really surprised because I was having a bet with Dad really saying that we, we must have some sort of Mediterranean in, in our blood because I'm usually quite tanned. You're usually quite tanned. Mum is as well and my sister is. So we, we were figuring there had to be some sort of Mediterranean area blood, you know, DNA in our, in our blood. But actually, it's almost like the complete opposite. So I found out I'm about 80, 80 something percent, I can't remember what it was now, like, yeah, 85% or something, uh, British. Um, and then I actually, well, e English, UK, so I think it was like English, Wales. And then I was 8% Scottish and Irish, Irish. So I've got Scottish and Irish in my blood. And then I was also 4% Norwegian and 3% Swedish. Got reindeer. So I've, I've, I've got some Scandinavian blood in me. Really? Which means perhaps somewhere along the line, a naughty ancestor of mine may have slept with a Viking oh or, something, God, yeah. or something like that. You, do you know what I mean? I've got, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got some sort of Viking in my blood down the line. And obviously I have Anglo-Saxon somewhere because well, most of the British is... You said Scottish. Uh, my name, Graham, is spelled for some reason G-R-A-E-M-E. <laughs> That's Graham. That's not Graham, which is English, G-R-A-H-A-M, it's Graham. Well, hang on, that's Scottish. Or did my dad have a bite? <laughs> hey, I don't know. We don't know. But it's that could be linked to it. Yeah. It is interesting. But I know so... I've got some Irish somewhere yeah. in there, and we all like going to Ireland anyway. Oh, but we do. That could be the link. Why, why do you like going? You feel happy going to Ireland. Well, that's probably why you feel happy. It's in your DNA well, that, somewhere. Well, that's why I've, I've, I've almost been inspired as well to do this. I came up with the idea for this, this kind of series as well. That's probably where it's come from. Mm. I, I, I like my history, and I wanted to look back a bit into what into our ancestry and, and you know find out a bit more about our ancestors. And you guys know that, and that's yeah. So I stumbled upon that idea, which was awesome. So now I'm going through my family tree. You know, I'm back down to like the 1800s at the moment. I think trying to find out at which point someone came over from from mainland Europe, really. It, from his Norway, auntie Norway Mabel. And his auntie Mabel, really, Uncle Bill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, it's been really good. Now, some of you, I know we're, we're talking a bit at the moment, guys, but we've done a lot of work, so we figured we've not done an yeah, episode yeah. where we kind some of you caught guys up with you theory, didn't they? Yeah, so we, we, some of you guys wanted theory time back, and we haven't done a theory time no, we haven't. in a very, very long time. So for those, quickly, for those that don't, don't know, theory time is where me and Dad come up with some sort of theory, sometimes wacky, sometimes very quite serious, yeah. and we want to know what your opinions on it are. Maybe we can try and relate it to, well, we've already had one theory about the kind of tinderbox thing, the tin exactly. tin. Yeah, yeah, where does that actually, so, actually come from, yeah. But the then you, can... you probably have some sort of Norwegian and Swedish, if I have it, you have some Who's of giving it. it to you? I don't, you That's have. come from your mother. So, oh, come, nothing to do with me, it's come from your mother. The principle is the same. They used all the resources they could around them. And someone made a really good comment on one of the videos last, I think it was the last Saxonhouse episodes, and they said, if the Saxon ha Saxons had power tools, yeah. they would use them. Yeah, of course they would. If they had they hammers would. and nails like nails like we yeah. do, they would use them. Yeah. They used. They were so resourceful. The Saxons, the Vikings, all that area, the Celts, everything. They were so resourceful about using what they had. They, they would. It was such a good comment, and it made a point of how technology has advanced to what we have now. And I appreciate that this is kind of a historical type build, but like I said, we're not doing it with historically correct tools as such. But it's nice to know that that was a good comment. I feel they would they would have damn well used a, a of course you would a, anything in life to thing. make life easier. That's why humans have evolved. Why we want to make life easier. Look at technology now exactly. to make life as easy as possible. That is what humans that is their aim in life as a human species. Well, I kind of go against that. I quite like doing the old school bark peeling. You don't? No, want to no do I don't. <laughs> anyway. I think that's, we'll leave that there with you guys. So any of those, uh, if you are listening and not asleep on your keyboard right now, <clears throat> let us know in the comments section about any of those things that we've been talking about. We have got to still think about our roofing material yeah. and our walls. If you guys want to put any suggestions, we already know really what we want to do, but if you have any suggestions about, also another point is we put the roof rafters on early. We know we did. You should be, we should be weaving the walls first if we clayed them, claying the walls, and then doing the roof. Because otherwise now we've got the rafters in the way and it's gonna be difficult to weave. But we did realize that. What we wanted to do is get an A-frames kind of structure up yeah. for you guys so that you could see it. 
early on. See progression. Otherwise you're just never gonna see any progression for a long time in the episode. So that's the reason why we did it. But yeah, let us know guys. Thanks so much for watching this episode. And really appreciate it. Merch. Oh yeah, merch is Don't there. Don't forget merch. If you wanna help support Dad's channel, TA Fishing, there's a link in the description. He's got this totally awesome fishing jumper on. And um, I'm just wearing a Woodsman merch today, but I've got a variety of it as well. Just and helps support the channel, really. It's nothing like... Oh, oh. And, and the place was supplied by my very good self. The, the caught fish on was our boat, the flatfish, yeah. Drifter. The yeah, place was, was home caught. We called it ourselves. We did not was get not, it for the supermarket. It was not a supermarket and plastic no. wraps, yeah. So anyway, thanks so much for watching, guys. Really appreciate it. Um, it's great to be able to interact with you guys. So please do comment below because we try and read as many as we, we can. Do. We do and and we've utilised a lot of suggestions from you. So if you have any suggestions, let us know what you want to see. Um, we're not we're not going to be doing this every week, the Saxon House. Like I say, it'll be broken up with other camping videos. We're getting towards the warmer months now, so I'll be doing some uh, more sort of canoeing, multi-day trips and things like that, camping. But yeah, we'll be coming back to this soon. And um, thanks so much for watching. Really appreciate it. All the links to information that you want to know are in the description below. And we will see you guys in part six.